Do you mind pushing to the next day? Right away, vacation, street vacation request. Okay. So it's under street committee presentation documents. Please click on that folder. So the video will start at, uh, at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And John, so we, we are taking uh, all council committee meetings now. So there, there's a camera there, and then there's a microphone right there. So we'll pick up the. Okay, yeah. we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order the uh, July 28, 2020 meeting of the Street Committee is in session and we have an agenda prepared for us with uh, six formal items and two potential discussions and we'll go ahead and uh, if it's Mr. Bishop's pleasure, we'll turn the meeting over to staff to walk us through. Uh -huh. So the, the first item, um, this will also be a public hearing tonight for a uh, street right of way vacation on the Scatterbeet Drive. This is going to be uh, sort of the most western terminus of Scatterbeet Drive. Um, Mr. Neal, if the applicant's here, um, maybe speak to it in some additional detail. Um, I will note that an updated exhibit came in from Dan Neal on Monday. So why this is going to the public hearing tonight, staff would request, we haven't had time to staff to sort of look over the, the details of, of that exhibit, so we would, we would ask to not be a recommendation made to council tonight right. for this request. <coughs> if you want to open up the, um, sure. the exhibit. Just by the old CMS door? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So this really does start. It's, it, it's the, the request is for all of the right of way scattered with adjoining the CNS property. Uh, so basically runs from the uh, from the eastern property line all the way to um, the, uh, the the town park property there on the western side. Does that include the street that's already there? There's a street that runs from that building, correct? Correct. Correct. You, you can drive most of that. Yeah, the high up. Um, it uh, kind of becomes a gravel parking area back there. Shut up there. Yeah. 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 So is this not access to Diamond Hill Park? It, it, it could be a potential access to it. Yeah. And uh, I think we could put in some kind of some parking in there. Number of years ago now. There, there's not a formal easement, as best could be told, you know, correct currently for parking or access to Diamond Hills. Um, beyond, you know, there, there's there's not a formal parking area. Parking area. And that was one of the the, you know, the conversation that that we had with the applicant. Um, you know, regarding regarding that, you know, maintaining access to the yeah. I'm I'm happy to speak if you want me to. I'm happy to keep my mouth shut and sit here. So on the exhibit, they they are currently showing a 30 foot wide ingress egress easement to the Diamond Hills access to the entrance, uh, partially centered over the the sort of the existing path and then part of which would remain over what is kind of like the scattered good drive right away. So if we vacated the right away, we could still retain access for a park or whatever we want to. Maybe it's yeah. some public it, works. It, 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 yeah. And and that's some of the detail I think we we want to kind of develop a little bit further just in terms of making sure that, that access is, is adequate for 
That be my, that's my first immediate thought is why would we give up access to something? Yeah. Yeah. I know, I drove, I've been out there the other day. I drove far as I could to the signs that has no vehicles. And I have a no lot. But I think we got another drawing from you to show that we are using that road. Now it's got the drive crew. Yeah, I mean it's it's it, this is current this is currently although it's not an improved street all the way through, this is this is currently our, our right of way and I I'm not familiar with sort of the history of this access, but I mean that that has been yeah. the way that that part has been accessed. Okay. And that access currently is not in an easement the way that our trucks go to, to access Diamond Hill. I can't tell you we use it a lot, but we use it so uh, we did our uh, stream cleanup and used that for access to mm -hmm. stream cleanup. Well, as the town grows and that there may be there may be more intensive recreational use down there. Yeah. So I mean it works and use that access so they can get in there and hold it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I would let John speak to this in more detail, but I think the 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 nature of this vacation request is to um, if the right of way wasn't there, it would allow for the setbacks from from that right of way to not be in play, which I think would allow for potential reuse system. Okay, yeah, you can speak this for you. So at first glance you wonder why would we be given up access and that's the mm -hmm. thing we're not asking do is give up access to the park okay. um, at all. Um, my client purchased this uh, facility a year and a half ago, I think it was about. I'm still seeing that door facility. It's been sitting vacant for quite a while. Right. Uh, they're actively working to uh, renovate it. Uh, they have a, they've actually signed uh, and have a <coughs> tenant that is going to lease the first approximately third uh, of the building um, and start to actually utilize that. Um, in, in the next probably year. Um, right now, Scattergood Drive kind of formally, or informally, I guess, ends at the property line and it really becomes what was the CS doors entrance and their parking lot and things like that. But the Scattergood Drive right of way extended all the way across the property to the Diamond Hills Creek Park property. Um, so what we're proposing to do, and I'll give you several reasons for that, is to vacate the actual scattergood drive right away. We'd go back and put in an actual real turnaround um, at the end of what is kind of the informal end of scattergood drive and dedicate right away as necessary to, to create a real turnaround there. Um, and then give a access easement 30 foot wide or whatever appropriate width from the end of that turnaround to Diamond Hills Creek Park. And right now, the way the existing scattergood drive right away goes, you can't really access the park in the actual right of way. So, what's kind of happened over the years is you can kind of see that little windy path that goes up uh, further up the page onto the Diamond Hill Street Park. That's been the actual vehicular access that everybody had used in the past. Where is that on there? Uh, so what happens is vehicles travel down through here to kind of mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. And one of the reasons oh, that is yeah. there's kind of a marsh wetlands area right down here that's on the park property. Um, and I'm assuming that's just way back in the day, that's kind of just how they got to that property. Um, <clears throat> one of the things my client wants to attempt to do, and the reason I put it on this exhibit like this, is that we work through, is we want to push that access as much as we possibly can further down the page uh, to allow for, and I apologize, oh, that's okay. to allow for um, the utilization of, of this area here for this back third of this building. Uh, I'm kind of right now thinks there may be somebody back there that wants to fence in an area and utilize that uh, for storage or things like that. So we want to work through the details with an actual kind of a design plan for where that access would be, where the town, uh, the town and or public would have direct access to the park property uh, that would be un, un, uh, unfettered. Yes, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, the other reason for this is 
this middle third of this building right here, we want to try to put in some parking right here for that third of the building. So, so this third is going to use this area. The middle third, we'd like to use this area here, and the back third of this area. With the right away where it's at, we're only about 65 feet away, the building's about 65 feet away from the right away. And with it being a public right away to do actual entrance standards and things off of the street, we couldn't we couldn't put anything in there actually really without getting so far up against the building. Plus the loading dock, and I, I keep walking up here, I'm sorry guys. This loading dock here it's right here. It's about nine feet off the right away line. So trying to put together all that stuff and, and make something that we can renovate and actually get this building back into being useful uh, is where we kind of ended up with requests for vacation of the right way. Okay, so the, the, the road or whatever you want to call it there, the, the semblance of a road is going to still serve as a primary access to that building? Yes, sir. So it's going to be maintained by the owner? By the owner, yes, sir. If we vacated the right of way, then that, it'll still continue to be maintained? Yes, sir. And I don't know if that could be part of the request, but I think that would be important, too, is to note that, you know, if we vacate it, that that access is to be maintained to some uh, decent level. Mr. Bishop? Well, I still have concerns, um, and I agree with uh, Look, you know, it's not necessarily bringing this up tonight because I do I still have concerns because I've been up there riding around and right now that property at the end is being used as a dump because I notice there's a refrigerator, freezer, and a mattress man out there. Okay. So if they are someone's using that, you know, most people are drawing that little white dot stuff. Oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's trash. Well, I'm going to that time someone's check that area. My question would be, if you attend a road through the, if that's a marshy land, how would you make it a solid road? Well, so so we wouldn't bring it all the way back down to where the town's right away is right now. Okay. So it wouldn't be here, but we'd try to push it down and try to minimize it as much as possible to minimize the encumbrance on the existing property. And John, there was some initial conversations early on, uh, you know, about having parking, potentially public, public parking. Right. Yeah, we, and we do that and kind of we could set up something where there's, you know, three or four or five spaces or, yeah. you know, whatever we work out. Um, or um, if that access goes through the park, that could end up on the park property as well. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the difficult part for the park is down where the town's street right away access dead ends in the park is marshy and wet in there. Yeah. So my question would be, if we gave up that right of way, all right, what type of guarantee would we have or get that we can still use that road to get to our properties? That's where we're proposing that we dedicate an access season, a public access season over top of uh, the existing driveway, which is kind of what it is now. Yeah, so the we're seeing a this business is the proximal location of the center of the new ingress, ingress public utility easement, basically. That if we did this, you know, when you're driving along the road, it doesn't matter whether you're driving on the right of way or an easement. So I think you yeah, what you're proposing to do is just not call it right of way, but have the easement in there which serves the same public purpose Correct. as access. Yes, sir. And, um, so you'll finish, you'll tidy this up uh, and you will see this again, or? Yeah, I think staff would like to yeah. puddle on it and work with Mr. Neal and hopefully you can go back to the council the next meeting. Okay. I would, I would, I would, my single recommendation is some assurance that it will be maintained. Uh, I think if we do this, it would be in good faith that the property owner would maintain that easement or maintain the access. And, and not to add more confusion to the issue. The town has a stormwater management facility up off the page that serves Vista mm -hmm. Um And that discharge pipe 
we have, we have since surveyed and located that. It is not within, there's two public utility easements that come basically from the subdivision over two uh, railroad tracks. This on this side. Yeah, they're over on the right hand side. Okay. And some of those utilities, as they exist, are not within the public utility easements. So we want to clean that up as well at the time. And I think that would require, I think, I don't know, would require council action to vacate a public utility easement or a portion of a public utility dedicated in the right spot. So that, that would be a different hearing, correct? Would there be another, a different, I mean, it would be a different process. It would, the council would have to approve it. Yeah. It wouldn't go through a public hearing probably for that, would it? It, it could be accomplished as a, we would call it a, as a relocation or a reflat, but it would need to be signed off on. Right. Just to vacate it takes a public hearing to relocate it, does it? Okay. 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 There you go. Thanks, Randy. And that, that could be captured on this plaque. Yeah. Yeah. So you see that as a different. That is what I was hoping we could yeah. do. So the last. We can huddle on that. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it would be yeah. beneficial. Yeah. The last thought, and it's a small one, is I see what you're trying to accomplish, but you're not getting that much elbow room right there. I mean, three or four feet, maybe? Five? No, well, I mean, so with the 15 foot parking setback, right. and then the, the, the road is actually on kind of the bottom side of that right away. Oh, it is? Okay. It's I can't in see that it. area. Okay, so then you're getting 10 or 15 feet, something like that? You get about 20 feet with, oh, 20 the, feet. Okay. with the right of way, okay. and then we get another 15 because of the setback. So okay, I gotcha. Okay, so the, it does put some material in for the for you. Yes, sir. And you're fine. Okay, well, thanks for the summary, and we'll take it up as a formal recommendation of next meeting. Okay, I'm the two update on Spradlin, Farm Drive, and Constant Avenue intersection. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. That's right. about a four way stop there, right? Or three way. So we met with you, mm -hmm. and we were going to go look at it in greater detail. Uh, we looked at a couple options. Uh, this option being, well, let me, let me go back. Let me show you what's out there now. Here is Spradlin. Farm Drive, here's Constant Avenue. Stop condition here, stop condition here. Sleep free, flow through. Mm -hmm. We considered uh, adjusting the stop condition. Uh, that didn't uh, seem to help with traffic flow in our view. Then we considered considered four way stuff, but that's problematic in that you've got two lanes and you can't do that. You'd have to move the traffic to one lane. So that so what we've concluded is this that we went out and re striped this double yellow, and you can could, you could just see the double yellow here. Mm -hmm. If we push this back 180 feet from the stop bar here, we would allow for greater stacking, allowing people to be able to turn left into Chick fil A. And minimize the amount of traffic that hangs over into this through lane and it blocks traffic from, from getting through. So our recommendation is to uh, repaint the double yellow to allow for uh, more stacking here and easier left turns into the chicken. And keep the stop signs where they are so and constant would be free flowing. Right. Right. Don't, don't change things up too much out there. 
And you don't think my only uh, thought on that is you're, you are reducing the storage for that uh, for uh, is that constant coming up behind? Is that which one's constant? Which one's this is constant? Cool. Oh you know, yeah, spread the farm, but spread the farm, you know, between you know the heavy shopping season, that backs up right there pretty good too. It does. And I you know, uh, that would be a limited number of times compared to every day like it is out there with you know Chick fil A. I'm just that's what I see there is you're stealing yeah. you're robbing from Peter to pay Paul. You're gonna you're gonna pay Paul with the extra storage, but you're gonna rob from Peter, which is even that's really a a curvy storage lane for that turning movement, that yeah. double, a double left and a through up there. Did this come to, to us as a complaint? No, sir. Okay. Go ahead. Staff, oh, oh, you have? Okay. So it was prompted by a, it was prompted by a citizen? Yes. I don't have, I mean, that meant, to me it makes a lot of sense because it serves a more routine, everyday need more than, you know, taking some storage from those turn lanes that would have an effect. Well, we didn't, we didn't look at this closely. Yeah. Why would you shut that entrance off? We directed traffic for it. So we hope this will happen. We believe this will happen. Uh, so vehicles coming out of this from that direction, are they gonna still be able to make a left turn or not? Yes, sir. Yeah, all they're doing, all they're proposing to do there is, is increase the left turn storage right there. Yeah. To get okay. to get people just turning the left uh, from the stoplight coming in, to keep people just turning the left to get them out of the stream of traffic and not clog up, not help, you know. Reduce the backup there coming in. So that's, that's, yeah, that's one of the things about that. If we did the double yellow, if it doesn't work, it goes clean over the end. <laughs> you know, yeah. If you just keep it even more, it'd be easier to do that then. I think this you know, would help. Do we like these fixes because it's either new stop signs or it's a pain. Yeah, so the bus was actually for the all stop there. Right. Yeah. Okay, I didn't realize that. Just a so as it evolves before we stop, kind of, and I think that was part of our last meeting we decided to cover. That's you know that's not going to be. It. Do we want to look at switching the stop signs and redoing and, and doing the stacking spaces? As engineering looked at it further, we thought, well, really the, the additional stacking spaces really where you get the most length for the public. But the recommendation was based on the desire to improve that area right there. Correct. I mean, they thought. That was a record. Maybe that would help, you know, four-way stop. Yes. So, and then dig it deeper and say, well, if that's the problem, then if the problem is congestion in that area, then maybe the four-way stop is not it, that this would certainly help. So does this require council action or not? Not really. It can be done administratively. It's striving. You know, just kind of want to Get a little bit yeah. of street committee. I think it's good. It's Bishop? I agree with that, but you know, you can put those for a way stop to move those signs around. Oh, that, that would be. Uh, <laughs> that would, yeah, I think that's the easiest way, I'll say, easiest way out. I mean, if it doesn't work, we can always go back and repaint. We, we've often discussed it. If yeah. we could retrain people to just come through the signal and take a right here and come around, you could slip right on in here. Mm -hmm. But people are coming the other way, don't I think, because I know they do. Yeah, that's a big backup. That's funny. That's funny yeah. that the Google photograph, you can photograph at any time. Look at the line wrapped around the building. <laughs> you know, the yeah. line Hollywood photograph is taken. That's the way it is, except for Sunday. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's been too close. Yeah, it is a very, very But look at that, this random photograph and tells the story. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, street committee is in favor of that, and thank you for uh, okay. bringing that to our attention. Uh, number three is review traffic issue at Roman Street and Starlight Drive. Thank 
turn off into the trailer park, a mobile home park. I think it's uh, just a blue. There are a couple of single family homes. Okay. Yeah. But the mobile home Maybe park just has units kind of right there to the uh, left, yeah, to, to the west, mm -hmm. and, and then it stops. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do this all over the place, but these are extenuating circumstances, and yeah. I think it's something that everyone recognizes. So, yeah. Mr. Bishop, yeah. okay, I yeah. go ahead. And thank you for uh, presenting that, and it's a good idea, and it, it is effective. I've seen it at the rec center where people are uh, pretty cognizant of that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Have you noticed that too, Wayne? You live right there. Yes. Yeah. They come up there and they. Yeah. They. They people pull in. It. Yeah, they recognize it like, oh, wow, it should be there. Okay. Very good. Okay. Uh, the next is review of the MPO's uh, VDOT smart scale applications. Okay. We got these from Dave Brew. Mm -hmm. uh, That's on our consent agenda as well, correct? Correct. Yeah. I have the what graphics you said over. Yeah. This is a kind of a unusual uh, application season this year. Yeah. Um, so I don't have numbers. I just have have the uh, project sketches. Yeah. So we'll start with the uh, park and ride. Here's West Main. Uh, here's Moose and Mud Puppy. Mm -hmm. They propose parking in here on this vacant lot and access to Mud Puppy here. Are you the vacant lot? Is that not no. properly owned? Done by Vida, it's right away. Related. Putting in a new entrance here. No, that would require, uh, but I think a lot of that is done by VDOT. Is that right? Some of that's right away? I would expect it to. I think, I would say. I think most of it is. As a matter of fact, I think you can see the property lines. Yeah, so you see the little white, I think the white lines are property lines. So it looks like they'd have to acquire this one lot you know, right, right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, it looks like the rest of it's right away. Looks like that red line might be the right of way. Uh, it, it, that, that is like a former, I guess, uh, basically abandoned or paper street there. That's what that is. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so this is re this is to replace the makeshift parking lot. And that would come out, or would, what would we do? Would we leave that there? Or? Okay. Yeah. I know where this is. Oh, okay. That's right. the station right there. Yeah. And then. Okay, I'm with you now, because I was thinking that the other the private parking space that people, uh, people use that's that right. yeah. Okay, that's what I was, I didn't think it was that large. Okay, I'm with you now. So they okay. Hmm. I'll probably use that once a month, actually. See? Yeah. Yeah. That little makeshift. You have to be careful going home in the dark, because you're pulling up a hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do park there, close that, okay. or at least once a month. Still yeah, and they were weren't they friendly? Oh, I don't know if they still own it, but yeah, I'm pretty sure they did. It's good for their business too. I think. Sure. Sure. When I think yeah. you know, I'm going golfing, I'll stop there and go in and get a couple of power aids or something. Mm -hmm. So and you see people going back to work parking and going into the store, so mm -hmm. so I'm fine with that. How many how many spaces are in there? It looks like about 70 or 80, I'm guessing. Are they numbered? That's pretty good. That would be nice. That's a 60. 60? Okay. So 60 spaces, that would be nice. Though. And you feel it be used that much? They feel it would be used? I would, I would expect it would. It's probably uh, 20 cars or 30 that use the, the main slot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. If you put that in, and mm -hmm. they typically, 
uh, Mr. Bishop, when they put in these parking rides, like the one that X118 was so very familiar with, um, they'll put lighting in there too, and so it makes it really safe. And so it attracts more people. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't leave my car in the city of parking lot. Right. right. I wouldn't leave it in there overnight. But yeah, I'm with you. Anyway, yeah. So I think it's a great application. Or, I mean, it is. And this is the, I mean, this is the, yeah, the county. I mean, so the county will be the county will be paying inside, correct? Correct. Okay. If it's successful, it will be fully funded. Okay. Yep. Teardrop solution. That's right a few feet down the street. You know where that is, Mr. Bishop? Not okay, that uh, show where the parking ride we just looked at is right there. That's the parking ride, right and that's the inter that's 114 interchange right there. There's the mm -hmm. off right oh, okay. down south. Oh, the temporary the ship goes right there. Right. And then that's replacing the two traffic signals with round, uh, a modified roundabout, which I think makes the lot Are you in favor of that? Oh, gosh, yes. I think that would be a wonderful look at that, a wonderful application for that. So keep traffic moving. And the signals that, down, that are down there now are an improvement, but they're not actuated. They're timed. So it's better, but it's not. But that's still the, good. Back traffic. Yeah, so you like this? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I do too. Absolutely. That'd be wonderful. Yeah. You okay with that, Mr. Bishop? So far. Because we're going to make it. Yeah, we'll. Okay. This one's a little dicier, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I thought it this, uh, this one. This is the reversible lane. And I, before we get into that, while you're finding that, I'll tell Mr. Bishop, one thing that VDOT's doing when you're reading about 81, uh, Sam and all the improvements they have, you know, planned and so forth, a big initiative of theirs is what's called STARS, Strategic uh, Projects that, um, in this case, what they're wanting to do is to make Route 11, that's 11460 there, right? Or, yeah. Yeah, 11460 in Roanoke Street, as you go out past uh, Cracker Barrel and go up to the wayside and down the hill and out. They're trying to make it better uh, if there's a crash on 81 for detours. Okay. Just to set the, set the table for that, that's what this is, a strategic plan that will help keep traffic moving especially when uh, there's accidents on anyone. Is that right, Wayne? Yes, sir. That's my Both. assumption. Yeah, sir. The stars are right, Jack. Yeah, okay. From, from exit 118 out to the top of the mountain, mm -hmm. uh, there'll be a center of reversible lane with, with uh, signals to let drivers know uh, which direction the traffic's going. Mm -hmm. Once you get to the top of the mountain, it's going to four lanes. They're going to four lane coming up the mountain. Uh, I think Dan fought hard for that because when those trucks pull out of Sis and Ryan, when this is going on, and they're creeping going up that mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it doesn't serve any purpose. And as many trucks as come out of that quarry come our way, uh, that was a battle worth fighting. You know, it does drive up the cost. So the reversible, the reversible lanes then would, are proposed between I-81 and basically just before you get to going down the mountain. Right? Correct. And then from that point, you see how the climb and 
the so forth, and that would become four lanes, ideally, if we have the basis of this, be four lanes at the bottom, and then we we'll go back to the reversibles? Yes. To the four? Uh, uh, no, it's, it's, it's four lanes all the way. Oh, four lanes all the way. Oh, okay, because it's a lot of four lane section. Correct. Right back in. Okay, yeah. good enough. And, and VDOT span for all of them? If it's funded. If it's funded. This is uh, very expensive and I can tell you right now, just looking at that, that's, uh, that is a huge number. This is a very expensive project. Uh, the project is about 2021-22 Transportation Alternative VDOT Awards. Okay. On the agenda this evening, um, we were notified by VDOT that we would see TA funds for two signal pedestrian uh, signal projects. First one at Wade's Lane in North Franklin, and the other one at First Street in South Franklin. Oh, wow. Franklin Way, South Franklin, First Street. This is Wade's Lane, entrance to Kroger and North Franklin. Uh, actually, prior to being notified, a resident that lives uh, top of the hill called me, said he was almost hit crossing this crosswalk. What can we do to get signals, pedestrian signals? I said, well, as a matter of fact, we're waiting on the official work. We had the unofficial work. Yeah. But, Initially, they funded this. We were not to receive funding for this, but uh, funding, God bless us. Uh, this is First Street. This is South Franklin. Uh, so we have sidewalks in all four corners there. Do we have sidewalks at Wade? We don't have sidewalks to go up there, do we? Um, not that it matters because we got. I know this is the other one. This is the second one. This right. is South Franklin first, yeah. and that's great. Yeah. At Wade's, we, you know, there is not sidewalk. There is. We do have the revenue sharing uh, project that we have not heard from that would allow for sidewalk up Wade's Lane uh, to Betty Drive. Right. 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 I was thinking of that. New York, new location but it still takes pedestrians someplace if you're going up and down on Franklin. So it still has a destination. It connects to a yes. It connects to a pedestrian connection. Yes. Even though the sidewalk doesn't continue up way, it's still uh, this side it does a little bit. Oh, yeah. 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 Just to see. That's good. And that was under what program? Oh, transportation alternatives. Yeah. Yeah. I think the uh, that, the local office. Yeah, or the uh, uh, film office had kind of recommended, you know, the town look at transportation alternatives for these projects that are either, that are smaller in nature, and uh, and, and that uh, you know so that and they, they kind of had it could be competitive, you know, and so we, yeah. we took that hint. Is that an eighty twenty match, eighty percent beat up, and it's beat up, but it's really federal funds typically. Yeah, it's federal flows to the state. And the town picks up 20% of the tab. Is that that is correct? It's just 80-20 match. 
cost is about forty thousand each. Mm -hmm. That's good news. Are you gonna present that tonight? It's our meeting. I think so. Is it on the You gonna mention it soon? Okay. Mr. Bishop, you have any other questions? No. Okay. Um, last item for, on the formal agenda is update on town's VDOT smart scale applications due in August. Order. Just give you the. I know it was on past the resolutions, but for three of the four that we're going to submit. I'm going to start with the connector road. <laughs> So you, here's 114, and here's the park layout. Uh, four lane divided. And then at this point, we make down into Kimberly Horn. This is narrowed down to two lanes instead of four. And it's nice with the layout. We get here to the Cambria Street, Providence Boulevard. Need a roundabout, and this is our uh, storage facility on the Cambridge Street. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a 10 foot shared use path on the Cambridge Crossing side. Uh, essentially, all the way up to the intersection. This application shows a shared use path on both sides. However, you know, for a park project, part of our uh, value engineering, we eliminated the shared use, shared use path on this side adjacent to these uh, commercial out parcels, and those develop to less them to build the <coughs> 10 foot shared use path. What's that little kink that little whoop you do up there in the alignment there at the furniture plant? Oh, furniture, what is that here? Well, well, just the, uh, it seems like soil go. Yeah, go, 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 go. I call it the technical term is a whoop you do. <laughs> the little kink, what is it? It like the east. It should have just coming in with a good sight distance in that roundabout. It's a curve there. Do this. No, uh, no, no, uh, no, 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 that work. Reverse yeah, that, yeah, that reverse curve. That's truly the technical term for it, but that reverse curve, <laughs> is that is that for a reason? No. I just for alignment purposes. To, to get aligned with. For the roundabout? For the roundabout. Okay, I'm yeah. on that. Uh, they lose their entrance here, so we're putting varsity storage and entrance off, off this side mm -hmm. to mitigate that issue. It looks nice. And what's the price tag? 12, 14 million? We're, we're uh, uh, 15. we haven't bought the RP 15, 16. Yeah. Rat, so that would be us. We, we've got what I consider disappointing news. We're trying to leverage one to leverage park construction, uh, rec access funding to help you know, reduce the cost of this overall project. But uh, the audit told us if we don't have it under contract by August 17th, we submit the application. We can't. We can't. We can't count it. We can't count it. That makes sense. Unfortunately, but the rules for rules, and we're yeah. just in this pandemic. And uh, when I called the audit about the revenue sharing and rec, ac rec access funding status, I was told it's just on hold. Mm -hmm. At the state level, they're looking at revenues and they're not going to meet until they have a better heat. Federal money they want, so it's slow. Very good. Okay, so this is the only question. Looks nice. I'll go with 
the uh, North Franklin Depot Street intersection improvements. That other project happens, there's going to put more pressure on Cambridge Street, probably. If we don't, since we, you know, from the roundabout out to North Franklin, because that's where people really, that's where that real oh, right. is going to be in making that connection. Yeah, so we can more detail. But it'll also put pressure to get that other section built and funded. Yes. So, zoom in here. This is improvements to the Depot Street, North Franklin Street intersection. Uh, this resolution was approved last meeting. Uh, this allows for dedicated left turns on the depot. We're providing the slip lane on North Franklin and south on the depot. Okay, yeah. Slip lane here. Mm -hmm. Depot in, in North. Um, we are placing a pork chop here. Uh, this distance is problematic, especially during rush hour. Uh, this is a right in, right out here to college. And the consultant ran a traffic analysis for this? Uh, I, I wonder. I really, I really like that right turn lane instead of the, the, two, the double right. You'll have a single free, free flowing right. I was just wondering. Short answers. Yes. Okay. So it, it has a traffic basis. It, yes, sir. It, Operational it, basis. It, it went from uh, years ago. We started this with uh, Coleman Taylor and then RDA because okay. Rinker Designs picked up. On this. I don't like that. There's only thing yeah, the traffic basis, so that's good. I don't like it. Uh, also up here to do this, uh, we will eliminate this intersection right here. And uh, put a T uh, turn around here for the residents that live here. Mm -hmm. and this will be uh, this will be two way. Looks really nice. Let's do this. Any questions? This looks this really good. We're getting coming up on our time. Estimate about 2.1. 2.1? Uh, yep. And so they'll do some signal modification, signal head modifications, but do you have to replace the poles, or can that be done? Will they have to replace poles with that? Or uh, for two million, they're probably doing something. Well, I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to. It's not a big deal. Okay. Involved, right? With, okay. As, as I have been in years past. I like the layout. Great staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam Bolshire, she's, she's. I like the layout though. It looks nice. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see here. I'll bring you up this project here. We pulled this out of the hat. Um, with. With North Franklin Street now lit from Cambria down to Independence, let me help you out here. Uh, here's Independence here. Okay. Uh, we are trying to leverage. We were told we're getting revenue sharing money for the sidewalk from Elm down to Bill Lane. Tied. What? Yeah. When did we find that out? Well, we haven't been told officially. Official. I was told over the phone. The eight foot sidewalk? Yeah. That is fantastic. So what? So again, we hadn't been notified officially. Well, we said, well, let's piggyback on this and let's let's add street lights mm -hmm. down the old front. <coughs> All the way to Depot. Because mm -hmm. right now I had to ride it that first night. Mm -hmm. You got the new street lights up, mm -hmm. and then you hit this intersection right here, and it's on the north right here out of county. But we've got sidewalk improvements on this uh, east side down to Depot. Uh, and of course, we're piggybacking on this, this project. Uh, the 
sidewalk project that ties into the uh, Eagle Park mm -hmm. project that's under construction right now. I think that's great. That's fantastic. So it has a whole lot of corridor. Not only has pedestrian access, but it could potentially have better pedestrian access and be lit. Yes. And not go. Yeah, that's really good. Whose idea was that? Yeah. To put to put the lighting up and go after lighting? I think it's a great well, idea. I just spent eating that knowing that that's good. Yeah. what the new section, rebuilt section, is going to look like. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, All right. Put it in more applications. That's really sure. good. I like that. Smart. Uh, last. Okay, we've got five minutes to start. Right? And, uh, we are, you know, this thing pops up. We're working with This is the this is Parkway Drive extension. Uh, this is uh, Technology Drive. Parkway Drive is here. In previous application, we pushed it all the way through to South Franklin. Lead up pressed us for a study. It's very difficult to documented that we have a congestion problem and we don't. Compared to North Virginia or Richmond Tidewater, we don't, but uh, so we're picking back here with Brian Hamilton Economic Development. Uh, this is their this is their uh, cul de sac association with development of, of two uh, industrial pads over here on the Cox property. Plus, where we are extending a 10-foot uh, multi-use trail all the way down to the elementary school. Very good. Well, we'll wrap up the meeting. It's a very good meeting. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sorry, I talked to you. No, no, no. We're good. We have a lot, we covered a lot of turf tonight. Uh, thank you, Will. Thank you, Wayne. Mr. Neal, thank you. Okay. And if you'd like to take my place, I'm going to pull up the line.